Hi, everybody. This is Kevin Raber of PhotoPXL, and I'm happy to be here on a Zoom call today with Julianne. I'm going to ask her to do her home last name so I don't mess it up from Skylum. Uh, Juliana, how would you say your full name, please? It's Juliana Chizova. Juliana is the Chief Marketing Officer of Skylum, and uh, with uh, the products that they currently own, own and, and work with, it, it's Luminar Neo at this point. Um, uh, I've got Luminar Neo uh, on the computer back here. Uh, I'm a, a very big fan of, of the product and it's really come a long way. And we're going to talk a little bit about the history of Skylum. We might even go back to where it was Mac Fun and uh, kind of get a little history of where it's been, where it is today, and what the goals are of the Luminar Neo product and where it may be going tomorrow. And um, somewhere along the line, I might give a few opinions on what I think of the program and why and where I think the uh, marketplace is. So let's start off with a little history. Um, Skylum, if I'm not was mistaken, was Mac Fun before this. Is that correct? Exactly. Yeah, that's okay. correct. So can you tell us a little bit about that and how and why it turned into the, the company called Skylum? Sure. So I've been the company eight years ago, but uh, the company turned 15 or 16 years old this summer. Macfun uh, started as a company, as a software developer of iPhone app. And we were one of the first developers on App Store. And when they launched Mac App Store, we were, we were one of the first developers there as well. At this time, we were doing small apps. Maybe you remember Intensify or Tonality or Snapheal from those times. And, and uh, But they were like just one feature uh, focused app. And at some point, we've had so many customers asking us, can you just give us one app so we will stop switching between them? And that's how Luminar was born. And it was launched in 2016. And back then, we were Mac-only developer. And um, in a couple of years, we realized that we want to expand and we want to also uh, focus on Microsoft users as well. And uh, that's how uh, Luminar for Windows was launched. And at that point, it's found it kind of silly to uh, have a name uh, MacFun if we were uh, available on both platforms. And we realized that, well, it's we have to change the name. So Luminar Neo is our flagship product. And the way we see it is that it will become a platform which will evolve. So we are continuing developing it. And we have done uh, anything like it, like that before. We did not release new products last year. And we just kept improving Neo. We just kept adding features. We just kept uh, delivering platform improvements, uh, speed increase. So we are focusing, really focusing on the experience of Neo. And also we see that we also have this extension. We have something that appeals to a really large audience and have a really high value for them. That will be a platform update. So we will include it in Luminar Neo. If something, if some feature is really valuable, but for a very narrow audience, this will become an extension. So if something is not really widely used, so there is no need to make everyone to pay for it and just to include it into a major version. So, but for those people who need it, we want to see the demand. We want to talk to those users and we want to release a small feature just for them that will make their life easier. It's a very clever idea in, in the sense of the way you're doing that. Um, before we, we go too much further into the product, though, um, I know many people know that you're, uh, Skyline is a Ukrainian company, and uh, you certainly uh, must be facing a lot of challenges being that. Of course, you know, I, I know myself and all our readers, everybody stands by your country, and really, uh, you've set a, a, a great example as a whole um, country in regards to standing up to what, what's being thrown at you. And it's it's quite a shame. I mean, everybody, this is a senseless war and it doesn't make sense to anybody uh, and it just continues. And uh, we're really proud as Americans to help you guys out. And so that must have been a challenge for you. How many people do you still have in Ukraine uh, programming? So right now I'm still in Ukraine in uh, various regions. Most of them are in Kiev. And um, yeah, many of them stayed throughout the last year there. That must make things very scary and very difficult at the same time. Yes, I'd say so. But at the same time, I felt that many people from our team work was uh, work was a way for them 
to get away mentally from from the war and everything that was happening around them. It's a challenge. We see it as a challenge, and uh, we also feel our responsibility to keep working, to keep supporting our team, and to keep supporting our users around the world because we have many of those. And I say that this was the biggest challenge ever for everyone. And at the same time, we were so grateful for the support of the world, from you, Kevin, from all of our community. We received so many amazing and warm emails. So many people really contributed. I feel that um, it helps us unite and see how many amazing people are there in the world and have this belief that in the end, good will uh, good will uh, win, uh, and um, uh, there will be no place for evil people in the world. Well, let's hope that dream comes true. <laughs> it's um, we're 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 behind you, and we're all watching, and it's it's just kind of a crazy world this day, everywhere. You know, and don't just uh, Ukraine. Exactly. But, so, how many employees does Skylum have? Skylum has one hundred and thirty-five employees. Um, we have. Most of them are in Ukraine or in Europe, but we also have a couple of team members in the States. And uh, because of the war, many of us now work from different countries. So we have many people here in Portugal. We have people in Warsaw, in Poland. We also have some people working in Japan, in uh, Indonesia, so like all over the world. So like the team suddenly became much more distributed than it was uh, in 2021. That's that's great. Well, we are in that kind of world today where we can remote connect and do what we're doing. You know, we're talking half a world away. Um, so if it's working and, and the product, I'm amazed it hasn't slowed down in development at all. Um, one of the things our readers should know, if you're not a Luminar user, you really need to look at this program because it's quite exceptional and probably one of the easiest programs to use. And there's a lot of AI-based uh, settings and so forth in uh, Luminar Neo, and there's a lot of presets. Um, essentially, when you work with L Luminar, you load your images in, which isn't that difficult to do, and then you're given a choice of uh, presets. And the first part of the workflow is, you know, maybe you can find a preset that comes close, and they have presets like landscapes or portraits or cityscapes or sunsets, sunrises and a slew of different things that are kind of fun to go through because now with one of the updates, you can actually hover over the preset and actually see the preset on a preview image and kind of make a choice of where you want to go. And once you select that image, you then select and go into an edit module. And the edit module has got a number of different things where they have an AI crop, an AI adjustment, and an AI structure. There's a, a slew of different things from noise control and everything else. But in some places, before you even go that far, um, I was talking about uh, extensions. And there's um, certain extensions you can go into for HDR and stacking and um, all sorts of different um, um, capabilities that certain photographers need. So you can purchase these extensions separately. And, you know, they've been releasing them about one a month. And Juliana can kind of change or, or update me on that in a second. But I've, I've, I'm a member. I'm a, I'm a Skylum member. So you can buy the software and be happy with it or become a member. And you get all sorts of benefits and updates and things along the way. But this, it's, the, the software is quite extraordinary. But probably what's more extraordinary is the price. So, uh, Juliana, what are you charging for this product? And how do you handle the updates and the extensions and, and the other things? And where does the membership come into play? So we have a couple of plans. Uh, first of all, we have a life, lifetime subscription, which is basically a one-time purchase. And we kept it as an honor to our community and our users to whom we promised that we will keep it as an option. And then we have an annual subscription as well as monthly subscription. Um, the way we structure it with monthly or annual subscription, you will have uh, all of our extensions, all of our updates included. And with one-time purchase, you will have Luminar, and you will be able to keep it for as long as you want to. And you would be able to purchase separate extensions on top of that. So, for example, if you don't, if you only need a yarn so you can just buy it and don't 
don't worry about upscale or super sharp or whatever. But description, you will get everything. And um, I say we charge a really attractive price. Um, we've done the whole price research before that. We've uh, asked our customers what the ideal price should be. So we've uh, we've counted uh, multiple opinions before we made a choice on pricing. And we wanted the product to be affordable to a larger audience. We have this easy to use quality of Luminar, and we want it to be we want Luminar to be accessible in terms of scale and in terms of price. Right now, we charge ten dollars per month for a monthly subscription and uh, one hundred and forty nine dollars per annual subscription. So it's about the same price, or you know, so you can buy it off in easier chunks if. You're an up-and-coming photographer and, and uh, work with it. Um, and it's becoming quite popular. Now, one of the things that I've always believed a company should do is not only support the product if you have an issue, but support the product so that you can learn how to use it better. And um, uh, I face this challenge a lot in some of the workshops that I have, as you presume people come in and know how to, to use any number of the different products that are out there, whether it be Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever. But um, one of the things that I think Skylum's done a great job of is not only the tutorials, but you know they have well, weekly videos and so forth that come up where you can get on a coffee hour, for example, and uh, you know pick up a, a new tip or a new uh, topic or meet with uh, a photographer that's actually using Skyland and see some of the work that's being done. And the other thing that's kind of cool is that Skyland went out and partnered with a number of photographers to create looks or styles or whatever we might want to call them. Um, and then essentially you can buy these styles and uh, apply those and be, you know, a lot of people just do one click styles and uh, presets and they're happy. And then, you know, you get right on the money and this prevents a lot of people from having to, yeah. to learn a lot of different things. And it also expedites the workflow considerably. So I think, you know, what's one of the, the benefits when you think about what you get for the price, it's not just, you know, $150 a year for the, the software, but you've got a lot of ancillary things along the side that you might have to purchase and, and pay for with a, a different kind of company. And I must say, you know, having tested it uh, considerably, the quality that you get out of this is very high and very professional. I mean, I find a few little faults, which I'll <laughs> say something about in a second, because I do have a question about one thing. But, uh, you, you know, I have no issue about the workflow, the progression of the workflow. And one of the things I, I think this works really well, and maybe Juliana will explain this a little bit more, is if you're doing any kind of photography with people in it, the whole portrait section and what they do uh, in the AI side of things for facial retouching and things is really extraordinary. So I'm going to throw it back at you that with that, with the AI and specifically with those kind of modules in mind. And maybe you can tell us a little bit about, you know, how those got to be and where you see those going. With extensions, right now, our roadmap, we do not disclose it, but we, the way we want Luminar to progress. So there are a couple of areas where we see we right now we can deliver the most value to our audience. First is hobby photographer who do travel. So whatever tools we can develop for travel photographers, we are going to go there. And uh, because we see that travel in Paris photography, right? Many of us are landscape photographers. Many people on the team are landscape photographer. That's why Luminar is amazing for this kind of photography. And because it's our own passion. Uh, I do travel photography. I went that travel photography. Uh, many people from development team, from marketing team. Uh, on marketing side of the team, we have more portrait people. But anyway, and uh, I think that really helps us feel what's important to add. And uh, we just brainstorm ideas. Hey, would it be would it be cool to add this or this? So right now, we want to uh, introduce more people, more tools that will help people explore their creativity, specifically in the um, specifically for hobbies and travel photographers. Uh, another area we are focusing on right now: new to photography people. And because again, as we've mentioned before, Luminar is extremely easy to use. Right, we have no issue with people progressing and moving on to editors like Adobe, uh, Photoshop, and Lightroom, or Capture One. 
because for professional people, for people who actually make money doing photography, those might be a better choice. But for people who are new to photography, I feel like remember the first time you opened Photoshop and that dreadful feeling, oh my God, what <laughs> do I do now? And that's absolutely not the case with Luminar. So you open it and you are able to play with it and you're able to get to the result really, really fast in under and 20, 30 seconds, you can considerably improve your image. And that's what we want to continue doing. So uh, right now, uh, I don't have any specifics on what extensions will be introduced, but they will fall in one of those two categories. Well, the extensions you have, you've got uh, Magic Light, which is a pretty cool way of uh, enhancing a lot of the, if you have specular yeah. lights and things in the background and so yeah. forth. Super Sharp, which... Uh, you know, everybody's putting out sharpening programs, but your sharpening program is really nice. And what's nice is it, it fits neatly into uh, the workflow. Uh, focus stacking for those people that do close-ups. Um, focus stacking is getting a lot of attention these days. And because a lot of cameras are actually putting a setting in to do focus stacking, but you can't do focus stacking necessarily always in the camera. So you need to take your images into a program, select those images, and then let's a, a program stack it. So you've got that. Of course, you've got the background removal, which has been really, really fun and popular. And uh, that works out really well. Um, Oh, and then we have the noise reduction. So there we have noise reduction in there and um, HDR merge, which is probably pulling off some of the technology from the old product Aurora. But um, you know, these are some exceptional tools that most photographers actually need to come on and, and work with. Now, if you're a beginner, maybe you don't even know what these programs are, but as you progress your photography journey, you'll certainly hear these terms and uh, most likely end up needing them along yeah. the way. So uh, to have these built into the program are exceptional. And, you know, there's a number of other things in there, you know, can change the atmosphere. So, I mean, there's the, the effects that Luminar has that you can apply to your images is really very cool. And, you know, it's kind of a top bottom approach. So your first, one of the first areas you'd hit would be cropping. And then, you know, you'd worry about exposure and, and structure and all these different things. And uh, these extensions we're talking about, some of them are sort of built into the workflow and others are kind of sitting outside in a, in a separate reach because you want to kind of have to do certain things before you get the image back in the workflow. So it all makes sense in the end. So uh, it works out really well. Um, you know, what I'm seeing, and tell me if I'm wrong, but many of the photographers that, uh, come over to Luminar are a lot of beginners and, um, you know, a lot of people just getting to, into enjoying photography and not knowing exactly where to, to go with their photos. Um, uh, are you seeing a big reach and, and growth into the professional market at all? Um, professional market is uh, still there and it's still important, but um, we as a company, we decided to focus on amateur and aspiring pros because if if you analyze the market, you will see that many other companies do compete for professional photographers. And there are many, like Capture One, like Topaz, like Adobe, obviously, all of them do compete uh, for professional photographers, where we can make a change. Because photography is an amazing hobby to have. Photography is um, like all amateur photographers, they start to be pros or they try to have a pro level quality. That's what we give them. And at the same time, we believe that photography is fun and should be enjoyable. And uh, we want to create this amazing experience for clients so they do not lose this far uh, along the way. And that's where we want to focus. Uh, and um, for us, it's incredibly important because as a company, we are very open. We are, we are very close to our user and we want to because you always can like you can text us you can uh, write a feature request we will always go for them um and sometimes answer their his emails uh, kind of often and you can really reach out to us you can meet the team uh in a field you can meet us in iceland on our photography camps you can meet us at uh photo walk we just had an amazing uh, 50 people photo walk in lisbon so we kind of try to be integrated into the community and keep this amazing vibe and uh, passion for photography alive in people so they can just uh, 
start with us or play with us. I believe it's so important that people do not leave their photos on their hard drives, but actually edit them and share them and proceed to the final product of their photography, be in a print or a post on social media. And they want to make the learning easier. It's kind of, you now. I'm a more advanced user and I use Lightroom and Capture One. I mean, in my position doing what I do, I kind of have to use them all. But so the the, the listeners and the viewers and the readers uh, can understand, I use this product a lot. Now, um, just a real briefly so you understand how it works is Luminar writes and does a catalog. It reaches out to a folder and reads the folder and gives you the previews and that's what you work on. So when I put my folders on my hard drives, those that I come back from trips with and so forth, yes, I, you know, I may address and, and end up uh, putting them into Lightroom and uh, working with them on Lightroom. But at the same time, because there are some really powerful features sitting in Luminar, especially like sky replacement, the HDR, the focus stacking and things like that, um, you know, I can read that same folder into the Luminar catalog. So one folder where your images are residing can be read by a number of different programs. So I actually build a folder uh, from that images that I, I brought into to Lightroom. But I think one of the real good things are, especially if you're an iPhone user or any mobile phone user, and you have your photos go into the photos albums or the photo apps of the phone itself, and then it goes up to the cloud and comes back down and can go on your other computers. Uh, you can read and load in your catalog your iPhone shots. And I think this is where, you know, you finally have a way to take these great pictures with your mobile device and then read the, the folder or the images, depending on how you have things set up, from your Photos app in, it builds a catalog of them in Luminar. And now you have a place where you can do all sorts of cool editing and different things like that, that are really kind of hard for people. Most people try to do it on a phone and you might be limited in real estate. You might be doing uh, some on the iPad, which is fine. But with all the things that the Luminar has, it's great to do it that way. And then you can output that image, okay? And you can set the parameters for the output and then output it to a folder and then just drag those images in that folder back into the photo app so that, you know, if you want to keep them on your phone and so forth, you can do that. So that's how I kind of do my workflow. I kind of work around and use it for a lot of different things, but it's that easy. I mean, it really, it doesn't get much easier um, when you do it. And they've added some really kind of more advanced features. So if you, you know, kind of a more advanced enthusiast and amateur, you've got layers and a lot of other things you can work with now too, to make this product um, even more exceptional. So it really is a good product. And I'm sure everybody's heard a lot of people um, talking about it out there. Now, one of the beefs I have, you know, it's got a, um, a checkbox where you can pick your favorites, but why in the world haven't you put star ratings in your, your app yet? The reason why we don't have it uh, is basically we've had, for Luminar Neo, we've had to basically write the product from scratch. So we imagine we, hold, we have all of this code, all of this like previous product, and none of that would work if we wanted to continue adding new AI tools, which we want to. And uh, because we realized that with each new AI tool, the product will become slower. And that was true for Luminar AI. So that's why the whole idea of Neo um, emerged. So we realized that we have to basically write it again from the scratch. And some, some stuff just did not make it into the new version. So we are going to our uh, feature request and we are adding some of the things which are important. But uh, back when we were with Neo, filtering and um, star rating, color rating were not uh, on the top of our list. We might eventually uh, bring them back, but right now we are focusing on what is uh, really requested by our users. So if you have any feature requests, please feel free to uh, write us on social media or contact our customer success team. And because our product team is regularly in touch, we read all of the comments, we read all of the emails, and we know what is needed. So if star ratings and color ratings will make it to the top of the list, they will be, they, we will bring them back. We'll probably eventually bring them or something like that back, but that would be a part of a larger catalog strategy, which I 
like which is not the point of the discussion right now. All right. Well, look, I'm going to let you know right now that I'm 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 going to rally my readers around <laughs> each year. So go back to your developers okay. and let them yeah. know that that's coming. I mean, that's an important process. My catalog now. Yeah. I think I got, uh, I mean, it's not huge compared to what I have in some of my other apps, but I think I have like 26,000 images um, in, in that in the catalog right now. And, you know, being able to find images or being able to keyword images or put them in folders. Well, they're in folders. You can read the folders. So that's a, that's a plus. But, you know, if I went into a folder with 100 images and had four favorites, I'd like to be able to, you know, sort by those four favorites and see it. Um, you know, you do have favorite versus unfavorite, but um, just putting my request in there that, you know, absolutely when it happens. And, um, you know, I'm, I will I'm pass sure it on our product team. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be a consultant anytime you need it. <laughs> um, anyway, it, a lot of these questions come from things where, you know, I've, I've given lectures at uh, uh, photo clubs and, we, you know, talk, talk, do a lot of teaching about raw processing and so forth. And I've had a number of people um, ask me, about that, and I don't have an answer. So you you gave us an answer, which is what this was all about. So I thank you for that. Is there anything more that you'd like to share that I might not have covered that you would like to put out there for everybody? One last thing for us, it's really important to inspire people to do photography and to inspire them to become better at photography. And right now, there are a couple of areas where we are focusing. First, is uh, first is def definitely improving Luminar Neo and bringing new tools and bringing new AI tools because innovation is is in our DNA and that's what Luminar was famous uh, for uh, for for many years. We were one of the pioneers to bring AI tools to the market, and we we intend to continue doing just doing just that. And the second thing we really want to inspire people to travel more, take more photos. And um, that's why we are launching our community events. So photo walks like the one in Lisbon or photography camps like we've done, we were already done two in Iceland. Uh, the third one is coming this August. So we are inviting people to come explore with us. And we want photography to become an adventure, but also a really fun one and Luminar to be your partner on this journey. So we are really happy to see how Luminar progresses. And I feel that it's a much better product now than it's been a year before and a much better product uh, year before than the year before that. So Luminar keeps progressing and we are really dedicated to the community and we will keep um, bringing our best game. It has come a long way. I mean, and I've gone through all the iterations um, that uh, Luminar had to offer. Uh, but the, I think the NEO program with all the AI additions, the extensions that come into it, uh, the catalog capabilities, and it's a strong catalog, um, have a lot of pluses. And uh, it doesn't hurt to add it to your workflow uh, because you'll find a spot for it, um, and as I have with uh, a lot of the work that I'm doing. And frankly, if I have friends that I encounter that uh, say, hey, look, you know, what am I supposed to do? I've been shooting JPEGs or, you know, you want to get into RAWs or you want to be able to get into something where I can do some more adjustments. I see all this. Um, the very first program I recommend is Luminar, because I think the thing that is important is that if you're going to start your photographic journey and you're going to expand on it through uh, software and, and, you know, outside uh, um, products and applications, um, the last thing you want to do is, you know, go into Photoshop and be intimidated by that or a number of the other programs. I think Luminar is the easiest way to get into doing this without being intimidated. You know, just follow the routines and follow the presets and follow the AI stuff. And 95% of your photography can be handled in Luminar without all the hassles. And then you've basically got these residing in the catalog and, of course, my big advocacy that uh, I put out there is that you should go to print. And where you, all you need to do is select the images we'd like, export them out to a file, and then you know go into uh, something where you can make these prints. And uh, we'll talk more about that. In addition, you'll find the links uh, in the video uh, below. And of course, with the article, it will accompany this video on uh, PhotoPXL. 
So don't be afraid to click the link and get in there and take a look at uh, what this is all about. And I think if you, you'll be like me, once you have it, you lose it. And like I said, I've become a member and you know, you'll get into your own web page on the site itself and be able to see the products that you have and uh, download updates and specifically the new extensions when they become available. So um, it's, it's quite a good company. They're fighting the good fight. They're certainly uh, doing things in a adverse environment these days. But as you can see from Juliana, it's like the, the attitude is really, really good. So um, I, I'm a very big believer and I, I feel privileged to have had a chance to uh, speak to you today and uh, share this with our readers. And thank you for making this happen. And, you know, thank you for all your hard work and please extend that to the rest of the team that you have working with you. And um, it's much appreciated, especially because you're all so dedicated to the, the craft of photography. So absolutely. It was an honor to be here to speak to you and uh, to share uh, some insights on the webinar here. And uh, thank you so much for inviting us. Thanks very much. And we'll hopefully see you, you next time. All right. Bye-bye.